But I think part of the problem is, in those trials, patients who did not get the bevacizumab got it later on after they came off trial. So in fact, if you're looking at how women do with ovarian cancer in terms of overall survival, they're, in this country, they're effectively all getting bevacizumab. It, it contaminates the trial. These patients are getting the drug later on, off the protocol, as standard of care in recurrent disease. So does that mean that we're actually missing an impact of, of bevacizumab on overall survival? Because both arms are getting it. It's possible. Now, the cynics would say, well, if that's the case, then maybe we should just use bevacizumab in recurrent disease because we'll see the benefit. The problem I have with that is that, um, first of all, there may be patients who miss it. When some patients will recur with ovarian cancer, they'll get very aggressive disease, they get ascites, um, and they're so sick you can't give it to them. They may have missed an opportunity to get a drug that would have been effective at prolonging their life. The second problem I have is that a lot of patients will tell you that progression-free survival is important. Even though it may not impact overall survival, progression-free survival is important because they don't have tumor, they feel comfortable, they don't have, uh, they don't have the anxiety of the concern about the fact that the tumor is coming back. So for a lot of women with ovarian cancer, they would be inclined to tell the FDA, if I can get a drug that delays the recurrence of my tumor, that alone is good enough for me.